Cricut Design Space just outdid themselves. You can now take a photo or an image and turn it into multiple layers with just a few clicks. And this is how excited I am about this. I have been using Cricut Design Space for probably about seven years and I have never purchased Cricut Access before. And I just purchased Cricut Access for the full entire year. So that's how excited I am. If we're just meeting right now, hi, my name is Nisha. Welcome to Little Craft Nest. So for this new Convert to Layers feature in Cricut Design Space, you can try it out without purchasing Cricut Access, but you won't be able to save any of the images you converted unless you do have Cricut Access. And so that's why I purchased it. This new feature is currently in the beta mode, which means Cricut is still testing it out. So it may not run perfectly smooth, but it's there for you to play around with. It's only available using the Cricut app on your Apple or Android device. It is not available on the desktop yet. Now, if you're like me, you like to use your desktop a whole lot more because while well, you have a bigger screen, but don't worry, once you've uploaded your image using your phone, you can go back onto your desktop and work with that image. So let's get into it. I'm gonna be using my iPad here. I have a large iPad, so I'm able to see the screen a whole lot better on here than if I were to use my phone. So let's go and see what all the excitement is about. So go ahead and open up the Cricut Design Space app, and we're gonna start with a blank canvas. Then go to the bottom of the screen and click on Upload. And here we'll have some different options. We have Take a Photo, which you can do, Select from Photo Library, Browse Files or Open Uploaded Images. So we're going to go over to Select from Photo Library. Now I have uploaded a few images here that I took off of Canva. I do have a Canva subscription as well and they really do have a lot of images to choose from. So let's start off with a simple design. We're going to grab these flowers here. And the first thing we're gonna do is remove the background because the background is currently white. So click on remove background. And anywhere where you see the checks, that means the background is removed. And then simply click on apply at the top of your screen. Now you'll see three different options. So if we start at the bottom here, we have flat graphic. So this is if you were doing a print then cut image and I have lots of videos on print then cut. So if you're interested in learning about that, I will leave those videos posted in the description. And then we have our single layer, which would be the silhouette of our image and it would just be a basic cut file. But now we're presented with a new option called multiple layers and it says you can create up to nine different layers. And you'll see right there that it says beta, which means it's in the testing mode. So we have multiple layers selected, so we're gonna go ahead and click on next. Now, once again, we'll be presented with some more options. You can choose clip art or photo. We're working with clip art, so I have clip art selected. And then we have output style. So we have two different options there. So we have stacked and sliced. So if we read the description underneath, under stacked, it says creates a solid base layer that other layers stack on top of. Best for iron-on, HTV, paper, and vinyl projects. Then slice says creates layers that fit together like puzzle pieces without overlapping. Best for infusible ink projects. So I think more often than not, you'll probably choose this stacked option. So we're going to leave our clip art and stacked selected, and I'm going to click off of it there. Then you'll notice here that we only have two layers and our yellow center of our flower has disappeared, but we can get that back. If we go down to the bottom and click on layers, you'll notice that we have only two layers selected. If we choose three layers, that yellow center piece comes back. So now we have three different colored layers and you can do this all the way up to nine. But as you see, some layers start to repeat themselves. So if we did four, there's two different pink layers and that's unnecessary. We only have three colors in this picture, so we're gonna stick with three. So let's unclick that. And you'll see underneath the photos, what our three layers look like. You can also zoom into your layers to make sure they are how you want them to be. Now there is another option as well. If you go down to advanced, 
Right now, all of these are turned to none. So you can change the smoothness. You can reduce the noise, which are those little speckles that sometimes you get in designs. And you can simplify any complex images. Now this is a very basic, simple image, so we're not gonna play around with these, but we will get into them when we upload our next image. Now to see what your file will look like all together again, just click that first button underneath your image and there's our flowers. So once you're happy with all the settings, all you have to do is click on next in the top right hand corner and then give your file a name. So we're gonna call this pink flowers and then just click on upload. Now these flowers have been added to our canvas, but if you were to go onto your desktop, this new image that you just saved will be there as well. So if you don't wanna to continue to work on your iPad or on your phone, you can go head over to your desktop at this point and play with the image you just uploaded. So right now, all these layers are grouped together, so you can go underneath and click on ungroup. Now you can move those layers around and you can see your three different layers. You can cut them out of vinyl or cardstock and you can have fun with this flower design. So that process was super simple with that simple design. But let's try a few more detailed images and see what happens. So I'm just gonna delete all these layers for now and let's try something else. So again, we're gonna go over to upload, select from photo library, and we're gonna choose this butterfly. Again, this design looks simple, but let's test it out. Once again, we're gonna remove that background and click on apply. We have multiple layers selected, so click on next. And once again, we're doing a clip our image and we want our layers to be stacked. So right now we only have two layers here. We've got a pink layer and a yellow layer. Let's add some more layers here. So let's do four layers for this design. And there is our butterfly. So we can zoom into our layers. This purple layer looks great. But if we click on this dark purple or is it a blue color here, you can see the edges here aren't very smooth. If we go back to that original photo I uploaded, let's click on that and we zoom in, you'll notice it is smooth. So why Design Space decided to do those antlers a little choppy, I'm not sure. So let's go back into Design Space and see if we can fix that. So let's go over to the advanced options and let's try to smooth it out. So let's click on high and we'll click into the picture here. It looks a little smoother, but it still looks a little jagged as well. Let's try, click on simplify and we'll try high for that as well. Let's zoom back into our image and that's looking much better. That looks a lot closer to our original. So if you're not liking the edges on your design, Go to those advanced options and see if that cleans up your photo a little better. So here is what our final butterfly will look like. We've got our light purple base layer, then each layer here goes on top of that base layer. If we were to go back down to edit, let's say you changed your mind. Instead of having a stacked project, you wanted it to be sliced. And I just wanna show you the difference. So let's click on sliced and it put everything back to the original. So we're back to two layers again. So let's change that back to four. And instead of having a base layer now, we have all separate layers. So none of our layers are overlapping each other. So with our first layer that is light purple, if you zoom in, you'll see all these little extra lines here. And I'm sure if you were to save your project like this, you could get rid of them afterwards by contouring, but I'm not sure why those lines are there. They don't really make any sense to me. So I'm just guessing that since this feature is still in beta mode, Cricut still does have a few kinks to work out. So even if we go to the advanced options and we try to get rid of that noise there, we'll do high, let's do high for everything. So it actually gave us a full outline here, but again, that's not something we really wanted. We just wanted the bottom piece. So you may need to play with your settings a little bit. Let's go back to our original setting. Let's go back to edit. We'll do stacked again because that seemed to work out much better. We'll go back to four layers and let's smooth out those layers again. And also press high for simplify. And let's go ahead and save this project. So let's click on next. 
we'll call this butterfly and upload. Let's make this butterfly a little bigger here and take a look at our layers. So if we ungroup them, our antlers here are actually looking pretty good. They're not jagged. So I'm happy with that. And we've got each of our layers. And I think that turned out pretty good. I'm just gonna press undo so they're all stacked on top of each other again. And I'm gonna shrink this down. Before I told you I have a Canva subscription and with that subscription, you can turn their photos into SVGs. So let's compare the two to see which butterfly turns out better. So from Canva, I actually saved this file as an SVG. So let's go and upload that quickly. So if I go to upload, I'm gonna browse my files and here is the butterfly that I already saved as an SVG from Canva. So we'll call this one butterfly two and then click on upload. So you'll see here, here is the Canva SVG. This is one thing I don't like about Canva. When you do download an image as an SVG, it comes onto your canvas all wonky. So if we stretch this out, you'll notice we'll have to put these layers together ourselves. So let's ungroup and then you'll have to move each thing around. Now we don't have a base layer like we do the way Cricut made our SVG. So we have this purple base layer here. So Canva separated our layers the way it wanted to. There's no adjusting them. So this is more like a puzzle. And so our layers here are not overlapping. That's why I really like this feature in Cricut. You're able to adjust your layers how you want them to. They can be stacked or sliced. Whereas Canva just decides how it wants to move your layers. And then it also loads them really funny onto your screen in Cricut Design Space. So that is the difference. Although one pro for Canva, if we zoom into these antlers, they look super smooth. And if we zoom into Cricut's antlers, they are smooth, but not quite as smooth. So if you look at the end of the antlers here, on the way Cricut made the SVG. It's kind of slightly a little wonky there. It's not perfectly smooth. And if you look at the way Canva made the SVG, it is much smoother. So I'm hoping Cricut works out some of those bugs so we don't get those jaggedy edges and you are able to make it smooth. And I'm also hoping they make some sort of smoothing scale. Just like when you use an offset, you can decide how big or small you want that offset. I'm hoping we have something similar with Cricut. But another way to make this smooth would be to create an offset for that image, but we're not gonna get into that today. So I'm gonna clear away these butterflies and let's try and upload a photo this time. So let's click on upload, select a photo from our photo library, and we're gonna try this crazy cat here with lots of multiple colors. And let's start off by removing the background. Okay, and Cricut just got rid of the whole bottom piece of the cat here. I don't know why, but we can restore that. So if you click on restore at the bottom, we can use our brush here. Oops, I didn't want to restore that background, so let's go back. We can use our brush and get this bottom piece of our cat. There we go. So now we got our full cat there and we can click on apply. We're going to do our multiple layers and click next. So this time instead of clip art, let's click on photo and we'll keep stacked selected. And it looks like it has given us a bunch of layers here. That would be a lot of work to stack and put together all those layers after you've had your Cricut cut out this design. So you can simplify it if you want. So there are nine different layers here. If you wanted to do four, you could do four and that just makes your design a whole lot simpler. And again, you can look at each of those layers. I also recommend zooming in to see if you're happy with the layers. You can go to the advanced option and you can smooth out those layers. But when I just did that, it looked like it did take away some of the details. So if we look at that full cat again, it looks like we're missing some details. So keep that in mind when you're using the advanced settings. You may not want to put the smooth on high 
because it does take away those fine details. Cricut automatically selected low for reduced noise and simplify. So let's try add one more layer and give this project a few more details by clicking on layers and let's do five layers instead. And I like the look of that. I find nine layers is just a bit too much and five looks pretty good because it's simple, but yet we still have a lot of the details. So we can click on next, save our crazy cat and upload. We're gonna ungroup our cat here. And you'll notice there's lots of speckles in this design. Let's say you didn't want all those speckles. I know they're from the speckled donut that we have. So what you could do is click on the layer you wanted to and then click on contour and then you could get rid of some of those speckles if you're like I don't want to weed all those out or how am I supposed to do that so that's something you could do if you want to get rid of some of those details to make the design a little simpler for you so once you're done tapping those spots that you don't want you can go ahead and click on done and you can see here we got less sprinkles on our green layer we're going to upload another photo and I think I think this next photo is what I'm probably going to use this feature most for. So let's check it out. I'm going to delete all these layers first. Click on upload, select from photo library, and we're going to choose this image here. Now this image I did get from Canva as well. You can go ahead and remove the background if you want. The background is just white. All right, well, Cricut removed way too much of that background and I don't like that. So we're gonna go back, revert to original. We're just gonna keep it like this. I'm not gonna remove the background. I thought I would remove the white that I have at the bottom and top of this image, but that's okay. Let's click on apply. We have our multiple layers selected, click next. And we're gonna change this from clip art to a photo and we'll click off of there. So we've got lots of different layers here. So here's that white layer that I was hoping Cricut would delete that when I clicked on remove background, but it didn't. But if we were to upload this, you could get rid of that background later. The reason I love this image so much is because I think it would work really well if you were to make a shadow box. You could cut all these layers out of cardstock and layer them up together and I think that would look amazing. I've not done a video yet on shadow boxes but maybe that will come soon. So if you find this to be way too many layers, again we can go to layers. Let's make it four layers and there we've got a lot less detail. I still feel like it needs maybe another layer so let's do five. And that looks really neat. Again we can go to the advanced options. We can click on high for the smoothness. Now, I think that just made our people like too smooth and they don't quite look like people anymore. So I'm gonna change that back to none. So play around with the settings and see what you like best. So we can click next. We'll call this kids, upload. We'll ungroup our layers here. And yes, this would definitely look so neat as a shadow box. So we have all our layers. But if you wanted to, you could go ahead and delete that white layer and then you're just left with these four layers. How cool is that? I can't wait to actually do a project with this feature. I hope you have fun learning about this new Design Space feature. If there's any other features in Cricut Design Space that you just want to know more about, let me know in the comments and I hope to see you on more crafting adventures.